3D printing is revolutionizing the way we look at modern manufactured parts. Here with me today, I have Joe McDermott, our technical account manager with Hawkridge Systems. Joe, you deal with a lot of clients who are currently switching over to additive manufacturing with their parts. Have you learned anything from those clients about how that can benefit someone in their modern production? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've run into a lot of customers who have um, a need to create different designs using off-the-shelf components. It's always cheaper to use parts that already exist, um, and oftentimes they weren't designed to go together. You need adapters, you need uh, step-downs, you need different threads, you need different things in order to make off-the-shelf components work together in an application that they weren't originally intended for. So when you're doing these very small production runs, it can sometimes be extremely costly to even use an off-the-shelf component because now you're making custom one-off pieces. Now, you currently are working on a really cool project that was able to kind of take advantage of that 3D printing philosophy of using an existing component, combining it with 3D printing to work in a application that it wasn't designed for. Yep. What's the project? I have a 1973 VW bus and um, originally it came with an old air cooled motor that it's really hard to find parts for now, basically impossible and extremely expensive to recondition them when you can find them. Um, for that reason I switched to a 1998 Subaru EJ22 motor, which is a pretty common swap these days. Um, and one of the challenges I ran into was not cutting into the car or into the structure of the body. Um, I wanted to keep things as intact as possible, and that meant that if I was going to use off-the-shelf parts or even anything that's made aftermarket for a Subaru motor, um, it may not fit, and I may have to either adapt it or change its design or invent something wholly new in order to replace that component that I need to fit there. I mean, the engine bay inside that bus isn't really that large, and compared to the engine bays of the Subarus these engines come out of, there's a lot more space to play with. So in here, we have some air intakes that you kind of went through the design iteration process and actually landed with 3D printing to finalize your design. Talk me through that process and why you actually ended up with 3D printing. Sure. Um, the main reason was cost, and I would say the secondary reason is fit. Um, with this metal part that you see in the center there, that was the first iteration of the air intake adapter. And the problem with it is that it's physically too large of a pipe for a bend uh, to be made on it to tight enough radius to position the throttle body where I want. Um, so despite the fact that we were able to cut and weld and reshape that part, it still didn't fit right and it cost almost $350. You actually ended up going with 3D printing. and. Now, you, you went through a couple iterations in that process. Um, we see on the left-hand side, we have a green 3D printed part. Tell me about that and uh, what happened there. Sure. Um, the main thing that I was trying to solve over this metal part was, at this point, the fit. Um, despite all the costs I put into it, I couldn't get the throttle body plate to open up all the way under full throttle, nor could I get the uh, actuation of that throttle body to open smoothly because of the position that it was in at the angle that it was in. So when I looked at this second uh, version, this 3D printed version, I was playing with things like the height and position of the throttle body as well as the angle relative to where the accelerator cable comes in and mounts. Now, we do have access to a wide variety of CAD tools. Why is it important to have a physical part rather than to design totally into the digital realm? Um, there are some things that you can't see in CAD. Um, for one thing, I don't have the rest of the engine bay or the rest of the engine modeled in my case, and so uh, sometimes there are some hoses or some wires or other things that need to go nearby there. Um, in my case, there was the coil pack for the uh, ignition. It was going to be in the way uh, with the way that that uh, second version was designed. Um, I needed to make it a little bit shorter so that the throttle body sat closer to the bottom of the uh, engine. And so um, this third version that you see here, this was the final version that we settled on and it solves all of the problems that um, were uh, discovered in fitting the first uh, revision, that green one. Now, the final one that you actually settled on is made from our Mark Forged Onyx material, which is a chopped carbon fiber. Now, this is an end-use part or a prototype part? It's an end-use part. I don't intend to replace this with anything else. Um, by using chopped up carbon fiber along with the uh, matrix of plastic material that it has, it can both withstand the chemical uh, uh, items that it'll see, things like oil and, uh, and 
mixed in with air and stuff like that. And then also the temperatures out of the sea. Since it's um, going to be in the engine bay, it's going to get fairly warm, but it's not going to get super hot because it's not attached to the cylinder heads or exhaust or anything like that. Now, knowing this is the end use part that's going to be mounted to your engine, did you have to design this in a particular way um, to benefit from 3D printing or did you just use traditional design philosophy in order to make that part? Well, um, a little bit of both in the sense that I wanted to make this, um, this tube at a very tight radius. So that was something that I could do um, using standard shapes but just wasn't physically possible because nothing will bend that radius tight enough for that piece of pipe. Um, in my case, what I did design specifically for 3D printing was the rib feature that you see on the inside radius of this intake. Um, that's there to both stiffen it when it's under uh, forces and flexure from the throttle body being opened, as well as the weight of the rest of the intake hanging off of it being cantilever cantilevered off of the throttle body. Now, the weight of the remaining intake assembly is actually a good point that you bring up. Uh, a lot of people kind of think of 3D printing as just prototyping and especially in this particular instance I mean the throttle body itself the air intake and all the other components you know there's some mass and this particular intake reverser is holding everything up now it's installed in the bus you're driving it any concerns any problems using it day to day Nope, not yet. I've been driving it for a long time now, a couple weeks, and uh, I haven't had any issues with air leaks. I haven't had any issues with uh, temperature deforming the part. I haven't had any issues with um, having the throttle body shift position or anything like that. Um, it's retained its airtight seal against the different components, and uh, it's perfectly functioning well. Wow. Joe, the part came out looking fantastic. Now, if you guys do have any other questions about how 3D printing can benefit you in your manufacturing environment, please feel free to reach out to one of our account reps and set up a demonstration to talk about our line of Mark Forge or even our line of HP printers and how they can benefit you in your day-to-day -day use.